Hi, this is John Roca for Collider here with Safra Safraz Manzoor. Is that right? Am that I saying do. that right? That all do. right. Let's uh, first of all, let's just say this, Bruce. Second of all, congratulations on getting this film made. How incredible has this journey been for you? For when you wrote the book to seeing it now on screen and getting that blessing from the beloved Bruce Springsteen. I mean, it's it's it is. Um, I say this, and I say it's a dream come true, and that's a kind of cliche. It is a dream come true, but it's kind of bigger than a dream that you can really imagine. So right. in a way, my dream would have been to write the book, mm -hmm. you know, because that that's enough. Like, that's enough. Right, right. To get a chance to write a book where you get to tell your story, that's a heck of a thing, mm -hmm. you know. And so the book, Greetings from Berry Park, I was really pleased and proud with it. Um, and when I was writing it, I was thinking. If somebody was to say, what is your ultimate dream? Mm -hmm. It would be to try and make a film out of it. But, right. you know, you know this, I'm sure more than I do, the number of people who are, you know, working on scripts. Oh, yeah. They never happen. I remember I should tell people I'm kind of thinking about it. And they would they would sort of look at me with a with a sort of an element of pity, <laughs> sympathy, right. a little bit of contempt. Right. Because they were just like, why are you even bothering telling me when you know this isn't going to happen, you know? Yeah, but watching the film, that seems to be something you've constantly dealt with <laughs> since you were a teenager. <laughs> Is someone telling you, what are you doing? Why are you bothering? It's not going to happen. So you must be used to it by now, right? <laughs> I know, and you think you'd get the message by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's true. It is true. And and the, and the, real, the reality is, it's a ridiculous idea of what's actually happened. It is yeah. that, and, I mean, the thing is, it's almost a film in itself, isn't mm -hmm. it? The idea that somebody from that background could now be sitting here in L.A. talking to you about a feature film. Yeah. And here's the thing that's kind of crazy is to make a film is kind of amazing. Right. But There's make, so much effort. Yeah, but to make a film that then is actually on the radar mm -hmm. and people are noticing and saying nice things about yeah. and then to make a film that people are noticing and you've made that comes from that kind of background and is actually quite good yeah I mean there's a there's a possibility you could have gone all this far and the film could have been absolutely crap right right but it's actually quite good yeah you got a what a 10 minute 5 minute standing ovation yeah scene. this was fantastic yeah and it's got like you know 93% on, on Rotten Tomatoes and yeah. stuff and you think that I mean the odds of just making the film up you know, are pretty right, bad. Right, right, right. But to actually, it's, it's actually a really good film. Yeah. And it's sort of connecting with people. I mean, it's like you feel like you've won the lottery, really. <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask you about is the relationship with your father. I'm I'm the son of immigrants as well to this country, yeah. South American immigrants. Yeah. I saw so much of your story Did and you? my story, yeah. being a nerdy kid who walked around with his headphones. Yeah. And I discovered Born in the USA at the same time. Wow. I knew nothing about Springsteen yeah. until this was a big deal in Rolling Stone, right? So when, when what happens in the movie happens, uh, how much of what we see between you and your father was even more uh, brutal in the relationship? Then? That's a really good question. I mean, in a way it was worse. Yeah. Um, in some ways. Um, so for example, in some ways it wasn't. So for example, in the film, uh, there's a concert in 1988 and, and, and Javed can't go. Mm -hmm. In real life, I actually went to the concert. Oh, no problem. Right no, well, there was a bit of a problem, but right. I went. I went. Right, right, right. Because um, there was just no question that I was going to go. Right. Uh, what, but in terms of writing the script, we were thinking about it. It was just like, well, there were so many issues and so many arguments. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, well, we can dramatize them all in one event right. rather than breaking them up. Right. But I'll give you an example. I was not allowed out of the house ever. I didn't go out of the house until I went to university at 18. Wow. In the evenings. And like, I just. It was just never going to happen. So there was no girlfriends. I oh, just, right. that, was, that was completely made up <laughs> for the purposes of like, you know, mm -hmm. wanted to try and make the hero have, a, have, a, you know, have, some, have, have, some, some, interest, have right? some love interest. Yeah. That was totally not even a thought that mm -hmm. could have happened, you know? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, things were worse. Right. Um, but also the other thing about it is, you know, I was really careful and I wanted with the film is not to make the father a monster. Yes. And I think that's what's really easy to do in films like this is, you know, especially when it's like the, the, the next, the, when it's the son or the daughter who gets to tell the story, yeah. it's easy to kind of simplify and stereotype the, the fathers, isn't it? Or the yeah, mothers. one, one dimensional, mustache twirling and never, yeah. Yeah, and they're just classic obstacles. Right. They're just obstacles. And I really, really, they had to be an obstacle because otherwise the film doesn't, you know, I've got yeah. a film. But I really wanted there to be no bad guys in the film. Yeah. And so I think Kulvinda Gurr, who plays him, I think he does a really good job, and we try to do it with the story as well, of making it feel like you could see where he was coming from. Yeah. You might not agree with him everything, but you can see that he's trying the best through the way that he sees the world. Yeah, did it help you read? 
really appreciate your dad because was I, when I was sitting there, and I don't want to ruin the movie, obviously, but that scene in the kitchen, oh, when yeah. he breaks down, yeah. brother man, I started crying in the theater thinking of my own father and his struggles that he must have gone through as an immigrant to put food on the table and clothes yeah. on our backs. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. So when I was writing the book, the first draft of the book, the dad was very, very stereotypically mm. harsh. Mm -hmm. And then I started carrying on and I was like, you know what? The job of a writer is to be empathetic. Yes. So I've got to try and see it from his point of view. Right. And then I started thinking, okay, so this is a guy who, my, he came to Britain in 63, my mum and me came in 74. So for 11 years, he was living as a single guy. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, his wife and three kids come along. He's like 40, and he's suddenly a father of three. Right. And he's never had any experience of that. And what that burden must be like. Yeah. yeah. And then, what's it like to have that and then lose your job? Right. Right. So that sort of level of empathy, and the interesting thing to talk mm -hmm. about the film is there's a speech that towards the end of the film, mm -hmm. which Javid makes, and where he sort of talks about a lot of these things. And yeah. the interesting thing about that is that I lost my dad when I was 23, and I did not have that wisdom when I was 16. Huh. Yeah. That speech is me talking about my dad now. That's incredible. Putting it in Javid's mouth. Right. Let's talk about one last thing, and that is, was there a Bruce Springsteen song that inspired you to write the book? Because you, it's just 2004 when yeah, you finally write the book, so yeah. you're, not, you're not just writing it right out of college or anything no, like this, because no. we see that in the movie, how yeah. much that inspires him to do the things he does. Well, I mean, there's a song called um, The Promise. Yes. Do you like you know The Promise? I love The Promise. So there's a line in there where he says, I hit it big once, but I paid the big cost. Inside I carried the broken spirits of all the other ones who lost. Wow. That is a really important line for me because I think that's what Springsteen does. Yeah. And in a sort of way, that's what I was trying to do with the film and the book. Yeah. Because the truth is, most people don't get out. Right. Of their situation. Right. They don't find their way out. They don't. Yeah. And Springsteen talks about that. Yeah. And so what I was trying to do was to honor and remember the broken spirits of all the other ones who lost. Well. It's a fantastic remembrance of them and an honor of them. So I love the movie for that. And I look forward to the sequel that will be based on Tunnel of Love. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> so that'll be fantastic. All right, this is John Roca for Collider with the lovely and awesome Safarez Monsoor. Thank you so much, brother.